sure this mic's working. Let's see if I don't think it is. Mic test, mic test, testing. Oh, let me fix this real quick. Settings. We'll get this mic working. <clears throat> Mic test, mic, test, mic, mic better. better. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I think it's better. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm going to get, get my chat, chat box, box out here, here so, so I can, can talk, talk to you guys. guys. And I'm going to post, post this thing, thing up, up on, on the old, old book, book of, of face. face. And, uh, and uh, I'm just going to talk about some of my favorite, favorite spring, spring stuff, stuff in between, between answering questions, questions and all that good stuff. This is a brief history of B&H, everyone's favorite photo and video store. Unfortunately, we all lost tonight. The Mets went to the world. Really pissed me off. Had me at the DT flat seven thumbnail. Man, I went to a long tackle hunt yesterday. And a matter of fact, I need to go grab something. So if y'all be patient for just a second, I'll... That, that I want to post, post that. that. It's got a lot, got of, things a lot of things going, going on. on. I hear my, I hear my, I hear my, I hear my daughter. daughter. Yeah, I, better I better go, go check, check see what's see going, what's going on. on. Her, her. Let me Let be right, right back, guys. guys. There's always, always something, something on the main main stream. stream. Um, going on. on. So let, so let me get, me get all, all this stuff, stuff situated, situated really, really quick. quick. So, so, is my sound, sound better? better? Still, Still echoing. echoing. God, God, why, why is it, it echoing? echoing? All right, try, all right, it, now. try it now. Try it now. Sound, sound still, still echoing? echoing? All right, all right echoing, echoing pretty, pretty bad. bad. What, what is going on? on? Alright, let me see if I can fix my sound here. Alright, see if that's better. God, why is this song of a gun echoing? I know why it's echoing. Hold on. How about now? Still echoing? I literally don't change nothing on my laptop, so I have no clue why things like that happen. Let me be right back. I got to grab something from a tackle hunt. I'm back. I'm sorry about that. But I ain't going to show y'all this little bait. I just broke this pole. I ain't going to show this little bait hidden behind my hand. Just give me a second. Because I know you guys have really been waiting to see a bait I've been talking about quite a bit and haven't got to show y'all. But I went on a little tackle hunt yesterday with my dad. Uh, he wanted to hang out and kill some time. So... I said, hey, let's just drive around a couple tackle shops. I got about 20 bucks on me. Let's let's see if we can find something. And I had a subscriber that has really, really been wanting some baby pack across and flipping blue. And I've been looking. I've looked through my personal stash, my dad's stash, a couple other people. Went to a couple shops that I had tons of net bait. And I said, man, I can't find any. And now I found them. So this dude wanted... As many packs of baby pack of car and flipping blue. I am better, Bob. Thanks for asking. I, I've been working, but man, unfortunately, the window business is slow right now, and so I'm not getting a lot of hours at work. So, gonna have to pump out a lot of videos this week. But uh, baby pack of car flipping blue. I love a good challenge. Someone said, "Hey, bait man, if you find those, they've been discontinued." And you know what? Found five packs, and uh, his name's Alan Howard. 
all I need, Alan, from him is an email, and uh, I'll ship them out to you, man. So I will, Bob. I I kind of was I was kind of glad didn't have a ton of hours this week, but uh, you know, people I work with, they're very, they know what's going on with my back, so. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that, Dustin. Here in a couple of weeks, I'm coming up to your spot. I'm coming to Mike's Tackle World. I'm going to film a video, and uh, I'm going to clean the place out if I can find what I'm looking for. So, what's up, Cody Platt? Haven't seen you in a while. So, but then I found this other bait. What's up, Levi? Man, I wish I was in that Florida weather, bud. I found this other bait, and you know, I really like. And I've shown you all this before. These are hard to get. I mean, really hard. You should check out the prices on this color on eBay. This is uh, the Skeet uh, Mini DR. This color is called Japan Craw. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's a buddy of mine, Clark Ream, one of his favorites. Literally, he's trying to get Lucky Craft to build 500 in this color. But hard to come by, even harder to come by, a Lucky Craft Mini MR. So that's a small square bill in japan crawl uh, i paid like 10 bucks for this thing uh, i'm sure i could flip this thing for double or not triple the money so dude i do believe your local dicks is getting rid of their fishing department uh, i don't like dicks don't like dick heads don't really care for dick sporting goods uh, but you know what if they're going to blow out their prices on their fishing tackle trust me uh, I believe I'm going to go down there and raid some stuff, but uh, our local dicks didn't really have that much great stuff. Every now and then, I find stuff, but they don't have no mega bass. These little baits from Lucky Craft are awesome. They're really close to that 250 MD uh, from Six Cents. But they had a bunch of these uh, SKT Lucky Crafts, and they're hard to get. And I told dude, man, once I get going off my back, I'll come back and clear you out. He had a bunch, so... Dude, I'd, I'd love to do a FLW Tour event in, in MLF Bakeman lifestyle. I, I'm going to go with the classic. I have thought about fishing some BFLs, Levi, so just because out of boredom. Shelton's would be a good place to start. I've heard they're, they're a, a really good tackle store, but my guy, all you got to do, send me a message. I, I've posted my email for you, so um, I always look out, so... If anybody wants to challenge me with a find, I'll do my best. Uh, you like dicks because they have Guggen baits? Man, I'm going to tell you right now, me and Bateman Jr. went to Academy. And I like Academy. And they have a lot of good stuff, uh, practical fishing stuff. Uh, they got a really good terminal tackle selection. And every corner I turned, it was a Guggen spinner bait, a Guggen crank bait, a Guggen top bar. It was Guggen shit everywhere. And... I was there for like an hour. I never seen anybody buy it in the fish department. Um, and it was kind of funny. Bankman Jr. said, Daddy, we don't buy Guggen baits. I said, No, sir, we don't. But, uh oh. Would they discontinue, Sean? Was it a bait in this color? That's my favorite color right there. I think Lucky Craft's actually going to be start making a lot of baits that were discontinued again. So, all right, I'm going to show you this, and I hope I don't get any trouble. But I seen it on a Ben Milliken video, and you know what? If it was in Ben's video, yeah, Guggen's trying to take over the fishing industry. So, uh, I'll tell you what Academy did had. I meant to grab some, so I went and filmed a video with Bateman Jr. And I'm posting that tomorrow. Uh, Bateman went to Academy. He was fifty dollars. Actually, he spent like eighty, but I let him think it was fifty. I got him a gift card with the money you guys donated, so he could do whatever he want. And he picked out fifty dollars of baits. It turned out to be eighty because he had to get some uh, candy for his mom. It was very sweet of him, and he did a dang good job picking out baits. Y'all are gonna be really proud of him. So, but Academy wouldn't let me film inside. They said I had to get permission from corporate. I totally get that. I understand it. So I'm going to send them an email because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, there. And it's not Academy bait challenges and stuff. But anyway, let's get on with this. Y'all want the axis? You're fixing to see the axis. 
This is the Axis, but this is a production model from Six Sense. My favorite color right here, Tiger Truce. Um, I can't say a whole lot about it. You do see it was tied on. It has a really good action. There it is. I've been throwing it in my pool. And, uh, man, uh, it's a different crankbait. Uh, if you're wanting a traditional square bill type of movement out of that bait, um, you're probably going to be a little disappointed. If you're a guy that likes to fish dirty water, if you like to fish in that two to four foot range, uh, it's going to be a bait for you. Uh, I've done some testing. It has a crazy range of motion. It's a real wide wobbling. Uh, it gets really erratic. Um, it's different, man. Uh, is it going to be for everybody? I don't know. It's very interesting with the way it makes that bait move. I don't think you could do that in a deep diving crankbait. Uh, but that's why they got guys designing baits, and hopefully I can help them out. But it... Uh, What's up, Walton Doyle? It's a it's a cool bait. Uh, I believe between uh, the Axis and the eighty uh, Movement eighty X six inch has two baits that have some action no one else has on the market. So, but it's you know on a steady retrieve, it's got great action. You could slow it down and then just sit there and wobble and roll right up near the surface. I mean, I'll be honest. The first time I cast it in my pool. I was like, eh, I don't know about this. And then the more I played around with my retrieve and some other stuff, man, if you're a shallow water guy and you like to crank um, and throw something that nobody else is going to throw, uh, I think that ADX is, is going to be the deal. The, the only thing I'll say is uh, deflecting off cover, it's a little different because it will dart really erratic and almost looks feels like it's going to foul up, but... It, it's funny, it'd be going and wobbling real crazy and all of a sudden it'd shoot over and then kind of rise up and then, then it kind of track off. So you need to play with it, uh, cast it where you can see it a few times before you really can understand. Don't make one cast and burn it back to the boat. It's not a very good burning crankbait, I don't think, you know. But that's it. That's the sneak peek of the Axis from Sixth Sense. And that's all. Hopefully, nobody gets too mad at me over that. But starting to see some sneak peeks go around. So, we'll just roll like that. All is well. Just trying to keep the kids from killing each other. Um, I don't know if the frogs will be available. Uh, I think they're going to be earlier than June. Uh, I would say there's a lot of stuff going to be out near the Classic. I mean, we're only about three weeks out. And a lot of companies have started to release their stuff. The Classic Diva's releasing a new Tatula SV there. Rumor has it there's some Shimano stuff coming. Did that thing have a chrome lip? No, it's actually gold. And uh, I'll actually tell you what kind of makes this cool. Of course, I'm throwing this in my pool, and the water's very tannic. It's like the color of Florida water. One, with the amount of roll on this bait, there's a lot of flash in the water. That gold lip creates an, another set of flash it's like an extra flash on there it's, it's really crazy um it's a lot more flash than being a chatterbait um but um you know this the lip on it to be honest it doesn't vibrate up and down like a chatterbait it just kind of flexes it makes it do weird things so this is a bait that has a very interesting same kind of concept does it have rattles what, what, what does that tell you yeah so I want to show you this. It's, it's kind of got a very interesting concept. Uh, I would fish the axis on the same kind of fluorocarbon I normally do, especially if I want it diving down there, because it's got a it floats really high and it it, it tends to want to rise just a little bit. Um, but and a lot of that has to do with the lip angle. But so this is a bait uh, from Japan, and it's the same concept. It's called a waddle bait. And it just sits there and goes, whoa, 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 and it darts out sharp left to right. And what they did, and they don't make them in a, they, I think they just started making a bigger size. But this little blade back here acts as a rudder. And while you're bringing it to the water, this little blade will, like, kick out. And, and it makes this thing zip left and zip right. And these are pretty hard. 
Heard Strike King is releasing a new crank of the classic. They may be. I'm not sure. I haven't heard much on the Strike King front lately. Uh, I heard the rumor a long time ago. This isn't from anybody at Strike King, so don't kill me. But they were going to release a KVD 2.5 deep and uh, another size of that weight bait. But what's my take on the Mega Bass Sonic side? That's a good question. Uh, I really like it. It's an expensive flat side. Uh, it's. I wish it was a little bit smaller. It's got good hooks. But, dude, Jane Juice Swim Crank is legit. I got a bunch of stuff coming. I selected the wrong shipping option. And so it's taking me like a week to get all my stuff. But. Well, there's a lot of companies that are throwing that, or guys that make chatterbaits with big, giant blades. I don't know if that's truly a prototype or what, but. Uh, a lot of th guys do that here. They they buy the blades and put them together separately. They use an oversized blade. Green color, craw color is money. Uh, they make a, a, a Sonic side that's kind of a similar color to that, you know, Sean. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I don't know when that video aired, but... Is the action on a bad shad different than a shad wrap? That's a really good one. Um, shad wrap's going to have a little bit... It's going to be more buoyant because it's balsa. Uh, the bad shad casts better. Action is very similar. I think the um, shad wrap has just a little bit of tighter action due to the length. And, and the bill is a little bit narrow. Matter of fact, we'll, we'll, uh, got, I got this box right here. The old flat side box. I got it filled up. I changed it from last week. So let's do a little comparison. Let's compare a bad shad and a shad wrap. Now I got to find my shad wrap box. This could be a disaster. Ugh. Disaster averted. All right. So let's get us a shad wrap number five. Got one here. And then I'll get this bad shad out. I like the color on this bad shad. I get organized and then my hooks are still um, stuck together. I don't get it. second all right so here is the berkeley bad shad this is the bad shad number five that's a cool color uh, i actually designed that color in a buddy of mine's uh, garage that was painted for berkeley's name's mike russell and i had it painted on some gunfish and he painted these up for berkeley and they said we want that so anyway but this is a shad wrap number five so if you'll see Obviously, the body on the shad wrap over here is a lot longer. It's uh, the they're about the same as far as length. But if you also look here at the bills, the bad shad has a smaller wider bill, whereas the shad wrap has a longer and more narrow bill. Also, there's an angle difference. If you can see that, the angle on the bad shad is totally different. But, this guy, because it's plastic, will ca cast a lot better than this guy. And this is, I think it's called like Rusty Craw or something. This is a great color. And I did get these at Dick's for like four bucks. So, so this is the Bad Shad 5. It goes six and a half feet. I would be throwing this on eight, ten pound floral. So, that's a little comparison. And then, I've got this bait right here. Since we're talking Shad Wraps. This is from Black Label Balsa. Uh, this is their shad wrap style bait. Very similar again. Shorter bill than a shad wrap, but this is a computer board bill. This one actually will float higher than this one. Very good baits. Now, let's see if we get this back to the Let's see here. Now I answer for your questions. Uh, when 
the throw of a Texas rig in open water would rather have the worm weight or the flipping weight. I'm going to tell you guys right now, there's no difference between a, a flipping weight and a worm weight. You buy what you like. I just buy the normal flipping weights and I fish those worming. It ain't going to matter. What I would do is I would just lighten the weight. My local academy here in Shreveport, Bossier, Louisiana, rearranged all their baits, and it's funny to have all the six cents baits and Guggen baits side by side. Yeah, whoever's doing the ranging over there, I'd probably, uh, they probably don't fish very much. They just say, oh, these look alike, so we'll put them together. But then again, you wouldn't put your crankbaits in your soft plastics. So. The Fritz side is legit. I love the way they throw and look in water. I got, so, I got something we're fixing to see here in a second. I only use a shad wrap size 7 and up. 5 is for Googans. Dude, that 5 catches them. It catches them. What's up, Brady Wolfie? What is my go-to chatterbait brand? Is there any question? Z-Man Jackhammer. I'll, I'll show you one of those. My, my favorites in a minute. Uh, so, didn't I tell y'all Baitman Jr. did a great job at picking out baits? Dude, Mimic Shad is badass. I tell y'all Baitman Jr. did a great job in picking out baits. And you want to know what bait he I, I, I did help him. I said, I'm going to give you a couple hints what to pick out as far as color. He got this right here. This is a Fritz Side 7. A lot of guys have been asking about if I've got one or not. I finally got one. Well, actually, it's Bateman Jr.'s. And he said, I like the red color. I think it'll catch fish. Shed wraps are great thrown on a spin gear. I'll be honest with you. Uh, that or you've got to have a medium light, like 6-8 casting rod, because you've got to be able to load the tip. So a lot of guys use 8, 10-pound fluorocarbon. I did dress in the dark again there, Sword. Uh, I didn't realize it until I, I got out here. I, I looked like a guy on Call of Duty, but uh, I'm definitely not in the military. Just to let guys know, I'm not trying to be a military guy. Uh, with all respect to you guys that, you know, veterans that, or current uh, armed forces members, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, take your valor. I just happen to, I like to match. But anyway, this is the uh, Fritz Side 7. Uh, it's got some unique properties to it. First off, if you look down here on the belly, it's got these little holes. And I was like, what in the world? But what that is, that's where the weight is. Uh, it doesn't have weight transfer. It has a very faint rattle, if that's even a rattle. But it has those holes, and that's where the weight is to make it easier to cast. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite baits instead of a shad wrap. A lot of times I throw this right here. This is a Rapala DT7 flat. This one I got in my hands is probably the hardest color they make besides the color called Crawdad do fine. It's like a blaze orange, red, black back. But I want to compare this because see Fritz designed this bait like he did the DT6. So now, if you'll look, the DT7 from Rapala is a bigger bait. The bodies are very similar in looks, but when you get over here, you'll notice how thick the, the Rapala is a lot thicker. The bill is a lot bigger. Now, part of that is because the way Berkeley's engineered their crankmates, there's this little weight in the lip still. See if y'all see that you're able to get better casting distance and depth in a smaller bait but they still have a very similar coffin lip you can see that this one's smaller and then of course on the bottom you've got this you know where they have the weights there's no internal weight in this guy there is on this one great cold water crankbaits one of my favorite it's hard to get a deep a flat side to cast real well but these cast pretty good I haven't thrown this, but Bateman picked it out. Very excited. They didn't have any fives, and it seems like the pros, they're all throwing the five around. So I've got a problem with these DT baits. And uh, matter of fact, if you watch Major League Fishing, uh, Ott Defoe was throwing this guy, which this is the DT3, smaller bill. But Ott actually had a new bill put in. It was a circuit board and a round lip. And he was throwing a shad pattern. He was calling it slim. The rumor is it's coming out at the Classic, and uh, it's going to be called the DT Slim. 
Uh, and they're basically taking Ott's prototype and putting it into mass production. Um, I don't know what they do to the price of these. I'm still going to throw these, but I've got way too many of them. If you look at this box right here, this is kind of my flat sides. DT flats, DT flats, all this is DT flats all across here. Then I got my flat A's, my Crush 75s. These are all handmade deals. And then Brett Height was using this guy. This is the Evergreen Flat Force, the Japan one. He was using this guy right here a lot. Um, so that is the old flat side box. Flat side cranks are cool. Uh, when you get into those wood bait makers, they make a ton of them. All right, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, answer a few questions. DT flat, I heard it's going to be on the uh, Egg Classic. Lips on the DT cranks back for me. That's nothing new. Uh, it doesn't matter if you buy 16, 10, 6, or a flat. You break them. It's just that they're brittle. Uh, I am going to the Classic Walton. Uh, I'm hoping I can be there all day Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If not, I'll be there Friday and Saturday uh, for sure. Bro, I told you Wheeler is a beast. I heard them talking to MLF or Palace coming out with the Ott series. Yes, that, that's going to happen. Uh, Wheeler is a beast, man. A lot of people knock on Jacob Wheeler, but dude can freaking catch him. I can do without the doom, but um, I'm glad that uh, old Jacob caught him on the Accent River Special, man. That's a great spinnerbait. Uh, of course, his new one's called Old Big, but it's the River Special with a different blade and stuff on it. But the guys at Accent are good people. My Academy has started carrying 13 hard baits. Yes, I, uh, Bateman Jr. almost got one. And I told him how much it was just because he was trying to stay on his $50. And he said, no, I don't want that. It's too expensive. And I looked at it pretty good. It had a different sound. It's very unique. Uh, I'm probably going to grab one myself. Um... But I do think for the price of, they're wanting a JDM price and it's just not, you know, it's not up to par. I mean, they want more than six cents on their hard baits. And, and let's be honest, man, 13 Fishing is new to the tackle market. Why put your price up that high? Maybe they just want people to think it's good. What are your thoughts on the baby bullshit head behind you? This guy right here? I think it's an excellent bait. Uh, you know, I'm not sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box anymore. I don't have no affiliation with Catch Go, but my man Mike designed that. Uh, I think that's one of the best swim baits you can get for a pond and guys that are uh, around some small bait fish. It's awesome. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate you, man. Uh, it has helped. What's the Japanese wobble bait called? It's called a waddle, waddle bat. And it's made by Amakatsu. Kev, do you have a six cents crush 50 square bill? Do you mind showing it to me? Yeah. If I can find the right square bill box. Here we go. Just happened to be laying in front of me. So this is this is the 50X. That's my color, guys. That's old jank juice, which the light doesn't help out very well on this thing. But it, old jank juice will catch them. But that's a 50X, small profile. As a matter of fact, I got one that shows up in the light even better. This is, again, my, one of my favorite dirty watercolors. That is Tiger Truce in the 50X. Not a giant bait. Very similar to the Lucky Craft RC 1.5. Matter of fact, I've got one. And we'll see if there's any differences in them. So this is the RC 1.5. And here's the 50X. I mean, they are very, very similar. However, I will tell you guys... The bills are a little bit different. You can see this is a little bit more rounded, where this is even more squared up. The 50X is a little bit fatter in the shoulders. Very similar. 
a little bit more narrow in the tail on the Lucky Craft and the Six Cents. Now, someone's going to go, well, you know, the Guggen baits and uh, the Six Cents, uh, they're they're very similar, but they're different. And they always compare Six Cents to Lucky Craft. So I'll tell you, I want you guys to know this. Lucky Craft got to hurting for money. They were almost out of business. And what they let what they let to market is they started releasing their molds for their hard baits. So a lot of companies in China, Japan, United States, they got their hands on this stuff. Lucky Craft would do something or they weren't going to get in business. They got hit with the tax, man. So I'm going to be honest, even if they are very similar, um, Six Cents doesn't really have to copy everybody's bait design. And everyone's making a 50 millimeter, 100 millimeter square bill. So um, I think the big thing I have an issue with the Guggen Six Cents is how it all went down. Um, it was just, there's a lot of backdoor stuff that I never get on YouTube that just went cool. But I still love the Lucky Craft square bills. And I'm going to tell you, there's a time and a place like this color, this Raven uh, Red, they call it Raven Red Flake Flake. Dude, when water gets a little bit clean and guys are not getting bite on the reds, you can catch them on this because it's very translucent. I really like that. Um, and to be honest, guys, Lucky Craft, man, if you want, people don't realize what an impact Lucky Craft had on the tackle industry. It was unreal when they kind of hit it. Everybody started having to step their paint jobs up, their components up, their quality. So uh, I always got a lot of respect for them. Um, especially the top water stuff, man. They changed the top water game. But where I have a problem with Lucky Craft on this bait is the original Rick Clun series. Yeah, Rick, Rick Clun didn't have nothing to do with Lucky Craft. He, he never, he didn't even design that bait. Uh, Mike Alton designed that bait, and they freaking fired him off the pro staff for calling him out. And that was kind of bogus. All right, let's answer a few questions. What's your opinion on the KVD 1.5 flat side crank? It's a great crankbait. Matter of fact, Ronald, it is Ronald Mac McDonald, the Big Mac. Ronald, it's uh, very underrated. It, I know a lot of guys that fish it in the summer, believe it or not. It's for some reason, they figured out on these rivers that 1.5 flat side from KVD will get bit. It's a really good one. Blake, I have not tried the new uh, swimming crank from Six Cents, but there's some guys on my Instagram that are really catching them on that, especially in Jank Juice, and I've been sharing that out. So, 75 flat or most flats catch them all year, especially in pressure waters where everyone is throwing erratic baits. Yeah, so not every lake in the country is like Kentucky and Barker Lakes where there's an offshore deer. Some lakes, it's always going to be shallow, and everyone's throwing the same thing, it seems, something different. You know, you can catch them. Yeah, Lucky Strike, uh, they bas they did, they basically uh, took all the Rick Klun RC 1.5, 2.5 stuff, and they tried to make their own and sign Rick Klun. That was a, that's why Rick Klun's name went off of him. It was a money deal. Lucky Craft paid him a bunch of money to use his name, and then Lucky Strike said, hey, we'll pay you even more, so. It was a really silly deal, and I, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the uh, Rick Klun series Lucky Strike baits. They're cheap, and they break really easy. That's just me. Excalibur made a great square bill. Uh, I, I don't know why, out of all the things, see, I worked for Pradco during the Excalibur era, uh, doing classic patterns. They used to send me all kinds of baits, and I'll be honest, dumbest thing I ever did was sell all my one-knockers and square bills. Um, but they, they literally sent me a case full, but that square bill was really good and way ahead of its time. That, that smallmouth green color was really, really good. And it, they had a chartreuse blue one I caught a lot of fish on, but that, uh, that was one of the best square bills out there. And out of all the things Pradco could have kept. So I'll put this out here. A lot of people want to say, um, uh, you know, Excalibur is discontinued all that. Uh, all Pradco Pradco owned Booyah and Excalibur. Excalibur was their pro. It was their JDM company, the high end um, Pradco baits. Well, all these guys had left Pradco, and they're still paying them royalties. 
because uh, you had like Edwin Evers, Tim Horton, Alton Jones, and all these guys that were with them, and they're paying them royalties. Colin J, I'll sell you my Excalibur one knockers. True or false? I'm going with false, man. Uh, I'm glad y'all are on here. Uh, I don't know if it's Cole or Jay. I'm going to assume it's Cole, but if it's Jay, that's awesome too. Uh, y'all go subscribe to Colin and Jay's channel. I love watching them. They fish. They 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 play with snakes. They play with lizards. Uh, do a lot of redneck stuff that I love to do. Um, Joey Nunner, what's up, Joey? Nothing like the old original boss of Bagley Bees. I don't have any of those, but I know you you do. BD Bates, suck ass. And you can tell Boy Duckett I said it. Uh, there's, I, I've got a Boy Duckett jerk braid in here, and I thought about making an Instagram video lighting it on fire. It has nothing really to do with Boyd. It's just the whole, the company's MO is copying everybody else and making it cheap, so what's your go-to big swim bait for early spring? Well, that's a good question. To be honest, I would go with the Scottsboro swim bait, a soft swim bait, or the Ignite seven inch swim bait. Um, it's, Jay said I couldn't have them. Well, I knew, I knew I couldn't get them. I don't throw a HUD much. I'll be honest. I, I, boy, this is going to make some people. I think a Huddleston is overrated. There. I said it. Now, if you want to catch big fish, fish for one bite a day, go with a HUD. If you want to get bed a few times, don't throw a HUD. And I think a HUD is a bait that you got to put a lot of time into. And when I go fishing... I really don't want to put a lot of time in it. I think the HUD is very overrated. I think there's a lot of swim baits. The swim bait game is really caught up. Uh oh, it's got you, citizen. Citizen sweet. When does the FFJ shine? It's a good question. So the babe is really good once those fish really start moving, trying to go shallow. It's good for catching those in between fish. And for me, it's also really good in that post-spawn where fish are moving out there and they're trying to feed up. That's when I like that because I can fish it really slow and it's really innocent. You, you think about, I always say this, I don't mean it. If you're going to kidnap somebody, you're not going to kidnap someone in the crowd that's screaming and going crazy. You're going to go after someone that looks sweet and innocent and that's probably not going to scream. So that's why the babe is so good because it's got that just very innocent swimming action. The head's got that little death quiver. But <clears throat> you know, a funny story about Boy Duckett, and uh, I don't, I don't mind telling this. Is uh, I fished a Triton Owners Tournament several years ago, and the first day I was wearing a Bull Shad swim baits long sleeve, and it was a three fish limit. Joey Nunnery was there. He he knows he he saw me wearing my Bull Shad shirt, but Joey and his partner had a good sack. I think they had about a pound more than we did. And uh, it's three fish limit. So we drop our fish up on the scale, and we have like 15 pounds or something like that. And Boyd's like, man, guys, what? that's a great sack for three fish. What would you catch those fish on? And I looked at him. I pointed at my shirt and said, what do you think, Boyd? The original Bull Shad Swim Bay. And he just kind of laughed at me. And we got off stage. I said, you know, Mike Book is one of my good friends. And... Uh, you know, I know it's a business, but I was pretty disappointed he knocked his bait off. And he actually took it real well. He just laughed and said, well, you're right. It is business. And he said, Mike makes an awesome, awesome bait. They're just wanting a cheap one on the market. That's all he had to say. Didn't piss me off or anything like that. But uh, I had to let him know, you know, who's boss. But I didn't catch those fish on a bullshit either, just to let you know. And in fact, I didn't catch any of them. I netted them. But... Uh, Six cents hyper jerk. I got one somewhere. If I can find it, I may not can find it. I don't know a whole lot about it, Joey, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see. Ever heard of a producer swim bait? Small company out of it, Georgia. Same boat as Scottsboro with softer plastic. Yeah, uh, I don't know much about them. It's a, it, it, uh, it is essentially the same mold. Here's the deal on that. I like the Scottsboro, so I don't stray off of it. But there are a lot of guys that have a similar 
or exact mold and maybe they make their plastic different you got to pick what you like the best um and, and i have no problem t telling you i use a scottsboro scott and andrew are good to me always have been so we're on the swim bait millican swank 77 video i think walton that was a prototype i don't know when the full blown of that had come out i know they got a couple more swim baits they may try putting on the market so what's up bass bank robbers saw that jane you posted up on my facebook page fat guy basin favorite colors for late winter and early spring red or yellow red or yellow how do i fish a scrounger um i'm not very good with it um uh, but i throw it out there let it hit the bottom reel it until i start feeling it come off and i let it push the button slack let it come back down uh you can watch a video with jake lawrence uh he's really good at that he's uh, got a video with him on my channel he caught several on that uh scrounger doing that what's my biggest fishing peeves not getting to go enough show me the trailer you use on the divine jig head uh which divine jig head Chartreuse and white chartreuse chatterbait would be great in muddy water. And I have not ran across any old man's TI classic spinnerbait. So while, while we're talking about spring, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, show you all some of my favorites here. I don't fish swim baits in dirty water, but I have. So we'll talk about spring favorites right here. And I'm going to start with this box. Now, obviously, I've told you all the DT flat. And y'all know the 75X. So what else I've got that I throw a lot in spring? We're going to kick it old school right here. PB Largemouth 9-4. This guy right here. This is the old Lord Jensen Speed Trap. And listen to this guy. A lot of rattles. Very, very loud. What I like this guy for is really burning. When those fish, everyone's throwing rattle traps and stuff. Ooh, you can throw a speed trap behind them and really smoke them. And these are the old ones, and they're hard to come across. The only problem about this bait is the lips will break on them. Talk some spro cranks. Yeah, I got, I got spros. So I'm going to move into more of... <clears throat> Not so shallow water baits. I'm gonna have to get uh, this box right here. Whoop! I'm just barking spiders in here again. God dang! Oh, another barking spider. So when we go to traditional cranks, when I talk favorite baits. <clears throat> For the money, on the Tennessee River, I don't think you can beat this guy right here. Spro, Little John, this is the MD. This is the one with the round plastic lip. This is Spring Crawl. This guy is ate up. You better go ahead and order these right now. I don't care if you go to Gunnersville, Pickwick, Kentucky Lake, Barkley, Spring Crawl, Little John will catch them. You can throw all the stuff in your box. If you're not getting bit, throw this guy. In the spring, this color, you will catch something. Uh, and then the other color I throw quite a bit over here. It's actually even better when the water's got a little color is this root beer color. So you got a little brown back right there. Little John MD. This is definitely not the most overrated cranks. This is definitely the good ones. What's up, Chris Merle? Another favorite. DT6 in the face that repel man I, don't, I shouldn't have to say but this is the color I like and I don't have many left I don't know what's going on here hot mustard and demon that's the only two colors I think a guy really needs in the spring now if you can't find any of those you can always go with the old chartreuse purple but this is this color is discontinued really pisses me off um, I'll be honest with you guys. It don't get much better than a Spro Rock Crawler. 
Again, unpopular p opinion. This is better than a wiggle wart. You can buy them all day long. People aren't going to rape you on the process. That right there is one of the best late winter, early spring crankbaits. Man, Mike McClellan smashed them too on Major League Fishing on that thing. But And then, of course, you know, you got to have him curve 55s. This one's got some teeth mark up on him. This guy's got, got, got a few bites. But... Anyway, that's kind of my choices, man. If I had to get a bite, that's that's what I'm going to go with. I, I really need to just do a real show, get real specific on those. But uh, another bait I really like, spring. My oh, gosh, is a dang spinner bait. What's up, Dan the man? Man, I've never had a bill break on a rock crawler. Um... Uh, Maybe I'm the only guy in the world. I bet in my life, out of all the fishing I've done, I've had five baits. Or, but if I don't count Rapala DT series, I bet I've had five baits the bill broke. Thanks, William Waller. I appreciate that donation, bud. I, yeah, I wish there was like a curve 75. That would be nice. And I actually wish they had a flat 50X. I think the flat 75 and a smaller profile kind of like a zoom mutt would be awesome i uh thomas hines you like the new bait man video so this is uh this is one of my favorite spring spinner baits ding this is the accent river special now my color selection is a lot better than jacob wheeler's but he knows the spots better than me uh this is the three-quarter accent See, it's got the big double willows on it. And like Jacob Wheeler, I like to put me a little trailer on the back. So I would take me a little six cents divine swim bait here. Because I'm probably going to run into a little muddy water. See what size we want to roll with here. Guys, this is going to look really good. This is why I like the Divine Swim Bait. It's, you can use it on all kinds of stuff. Dude, I, I store all my crankbaits in these uh, Bass Mafia 3700 Deeps. I don't have any issues out of them. Um, we're going to put... We're going to make something sexy, boys. We're going to make us a little dirty water special. Oh. Huh. Oh, oh yeah. We'll get our skirt a little bit fixed. We're going to put the purple on the back of that. Oh my goodness. But yeah, dirty water. I like me a big spinner bait or clean water in the spring. That's why I like this color because it's not super bright and it's not super white. So I can imitate a lot of things with this. But this guy right here, that, that three and a half inch size divine swim mate's perfect on the back of that. Oh my gosh. I don't even want to put this back in a package. I don't think I am. I'm going to put that up here because I'm going to tie that guy on soon. But I love a spinnerbait in the spring. Uh, I like that one. This one right here. This is from uh, Spot Sticker. That's the Shad Head. Uh, see, it's got a really short skirt. I really like this. Cleaner water is when I'm going to run these double willows. But man, spinnerbait is one of my go-to. I was so excited when Wheeler won it on a spinnerbait. I made a joke and post on Facebook. Somewhere there is a kid that doesn't know what a spinnerbait is. New Diwa boxes do look sweet. I had a DT and all I got back was the bill. Colorado Blade, yeah, for really dirty water in the spring. And I've showed these before. Let me get, get one here. Gotta get, my, get the right one. You can go to something like, whoop, wrong bait. I mean, digging in the Bass Mafia spinnerbait box as we speak. So this is this is from my buddy Robert Ang Angler's Assets. He makes a really good. Uh, he's got an Indiana blade and a Colorado up here. This is a really good combination for dirty water. Now, different companies you can get different color blades. Robert he does his own work, but 
uh, Booyah Covert's got the orange kicker. War Eagle accent, they all make a really good one. But you want a lot of vibration in that muddy, dirty water. If you don't have a choice, this right here. I like fishing these because I fish these really high in a water cup. Hold on. That's great to know, Tyler, because uh, Bateman Jr. picked him up on their academy. Now i got to figure out where I got this from. I'm trying to stay organized, so it may take me a bit. But, yeah. These right here, Sean, I haven't thrown them, but I got a good deal on these Mega Bass spinner baits. Uh, it's kind of a weird, like, half willow blade. All right, no spinner bait. That's the. All right, here. I'm trying to read the chat and look at baits at the same time. All right. I'm going to answer some questions. What do I think of the covert? Um, I don't want to spoil the video I did with Bakeman Jr., so I'll just leave it at that. You look tomorrow night for that. Since the Jackhammer and Thunder Crew came out, basically, I barely touched a spinner bait box. I agree. I was one of those guys that I was late to the bladed jig game party. And then once I found out, I really picked that up a whole lot. And I put spinner baits on the back burner. In the last year or two, I've really thrown that spinner bait a lot more in the spring. And I've caught some really big fish. Um, I think it gets bigger bites. Now, you won't catch as many. And you get an offshore spot like Jacob Wheeler. I'm not so sure he couldn't have just thrown a DT6 in there and caught those fish. But Obviously, what he had was working, but. What do I prefer for burning spinner baits? Spot, sticker, and war eagle. Uh, so the war eagle uh, spot sticker mini me is one of the best burning spinner baits you'll ever find. And it is handcrafted, hand tuned there uh, by Ryan Coleman. It is really, really good. How about a shallow 1.5 flat from Strike King? I have heard, to the grapevine, they're working on a handmade crankbait. What do you think of the Spinning Quake 80? Good question, Russ. I just have not fished it. I love the Quake. Matter of fact, one of my best spring favorites. I'll show you my favorite lipless colors right here. Talk about lipless crankbaits. It's one of my favorites right here. Three quarter ounce. Bill Lewis. That color is root beer. It is the nastiest, ugly looking. It looks like a daggum turd with an orange belly. But let me tell you, the guys that know, they know. And this thing catches them. And I think one reason it catches them really good is we don't have a lot of really clear water in the spring. And that white, you think about it like a jerk bait. In those overcast days, the guys like the white matte finishes. It really shows up big time in that dirty uh, window. But it is a dadgum turd. But it catches them. Uh, so that's one of my go-tos. Gosh dang. It's hard to talk go-to lipless without talking about, you know, the Red Eye Shad, Chili Craw. It's always been one of my favorites. And... I, I got to find my Red Eye Shad box. I had a bunch, but Chili Craw is a go-to. If you're in an academy or any tackle shop and can't figure out what you want, get your Chili Craw in the spring. And then, yeah, I like these a lot. So, if you guys don't know, My favorite lipless right now is that Quake 70 from Six Cents. That's my favorite color right there. That's Tiger Truce, but it gets hard to get sometimes. But that's really good. And that's that's the that's not the thud. And then here's the the thud version. Ah, I'm hooked. Ah. Uh. So there's the thud. That's a really good one. One reason. I forgot the name of this color, but it's kind of got that a lot of shine gold orange on it. It's a really good one. So 
Um, that's the Quake Thud 70, and I like the Thuds a lot more in real cold water. Uh, once that water gets about 55, I tend to go to more of that style of a rattle. And that's kind of on all my baits. And I, I have caught them really good on this lipless right here. Well, I can't find the guy I was looking for. What the heck? All right, anyway, that's my go-to lipless. I'm going to go with my reds and go with chartreuse, but I will tell you guys that a chrome blue, whatever style of lipless you like, is very underrated. Brown Eye Craw, thank you, Cole, for the assist. I'll give you a pack of swim baits next time I see you. Warpeg is a good bait. Uh, no, it's Brown Eye Crawl, uh, Sean. Jackal 1070 is a really good bait. Uh, it's hard not to turn one of these streams into a technical show, but we're going to have to do a lipless crankbait show very soon. I've I've got uh, got this thing full of them, man. I've actually got to get to putting some of this six cent stuff you see behind me in boxes because it's got to where I need to get reorganized. Heck, while we're at it, we might as well look at some of my jerk baits. Let's do a little jerking. So I'm going to let you guys know that for the money, this little guy right here will catch him anywhere in the country. That's a rogue. That's a regular suspending Smithwick rogue. Um, and this is the bait that many pros say, when it's cold, this is the deal. I'll, I'm a big fan of that one right there. That's uh, That color is just called clown. Great on bright days. It's actually great on water that's also a little bit dingy because it's got so much flash to it. Favorite jerkbait rod, man, I just use the custom rod that's seven foot, medium, moderate action. Almost, almost medium light. I own nothing but six cents cranks and lipless. Will I be able to compete with just using six cents? Sure. If you're confident in it, man, uh, I don't think there's any magic company, any magic bait company on the market, but there's guys that all they throw is Strike King, their competitor. There's guys that only throw Lucky Craft, and there's guys that will throw only six cents. You can still be competitive because at the end of the day, there's no magic bait. You've got to be able to find fish to catch fish. Um, so, obviously, this is my jerk bait box. Um, I keep it really simple. I've got to put some hooks on this guy. This You talk about this one right here. It's the pointer 70 um not pointer 70 pointer 100 this was the first high-end jerk bait that guys would pay for over here uh 15 16 bucks i used to have a bunch of these but this is a that pointer was really loud it has a lot of side to side movement it doesn't roll a whole lot but lots of side to side movement and suspends perfect out of the package now this is one this is my was my one time favorite spring jerk bait. This is the Table Rock Shad. This is the Slender Pointer 127 MR. This is the one a lot of guys really want. I don't know if you can see that in the light. It's got a weight transfer system in it. Watch that ball. These balls roll. You could catch this guy a mile. On. Yeah, I put some red treble hooks on it. I don't know if it helped, but I catch them on it. It's uh, obviously a, a bigger profile from something like. I ain't got one the hooks are all in. You know, this is obviously the Mac Daddy, the Vision 110 Mega Bass, but that 127, you can see how much bigger that Lucky Craft is. Now, this is bait has a lot more roll and flash. This is going to dart and roll. Um, again, bigger profile, less money. These are, I think these are discontinued, so. Good luck finding them. 
And then my other favorite, as you guys know, is this guy right here. And this is the one I caught him on last year really good. This is my, the Six Cents Provoke. Probably my favorite jerk bait for the price point right now. Uh, that's Ghost Bone Minnow. That's a killer color. Um, the, for the guys that don't want to spend the money on Mega Bass or Lucky Craft, dude, these for nine bucks are the deal. They suspend really good. They got awesome hooks on them. And the colors, I mean, you can't beat the colors from Six Cents. I, I'm, I want to throw this guy right here. I, I feel like if I can get around those small jaws, he's going to eat this one right here. Whew, I like that pink color. Yep. 106, I think, is probably one of the most underrated baits Six Cents makes. Everyone talks about the crankbaits, the square bills, flat sides. Dude, those jerk baits for the money are really, really good. Now, saying that, I still have me a handful of KVD deep jerk baits. I designed that color. It's called Purple Freak. Um, long story short, my Strike King rep said they need some custom colors. Come up with some. I said, y'all ain't got that. And, uh,. I got me a, a good handful of stuff, but mostly, you know, I've got Provokes up here. Uh, ooh, that's a discontinued Excalibur jerkbait right here. This was a good bait. So basically what Excalibur tried to do is make a high-end Rogue. And this EE4 jerkbait has got something a Rogue doesn't have. Really, really lot loud. That's a good one. Norman Flake. I need to cut my nails. Go to's, crankbaits, liftless, jerk baits. Woo! Spro mix stick was awesome. Alright, I'm gonna answer some questions here. Uh I only have Guggen baits. Can I get by just using Guggens? Yeah, sure. Um I'm gonna be honest, I I joke around about the Guggen guys or whatnot, but I really don't want to focus my channel on making fun of the Guggens or their baits or anything like that. Uh, because at the end of the day they got more money than me. But um split rings at the line tie or loop knot sometimes uh for the most part i just use a split ring and that's where i, I tie on uh, i don't use a loop knot on jerk bait i tie the same knot all the time uh which is a san diego jam knot mainly because that's the one i know how to tie the easiest um and it just doesn't break mm. What do you think of the silly iPhone lure vids? You know, whatever you gotta do to get vid uh, views, I guess. I'm not gonna use an iPhone as a lure or a GoPro. Uh, that's obviously entertainment value. I'm not in the entertainment business. I'm trying to be in one of the education part. So, my son and I are taking a trip to Lake Fork in Texas in mid-April. What tackle should I pack with us? Woo, that's a good question. I'd get some hollow belly swim baits. I'd probably get some frogs some lipless baits and hit up my man ronnie kelly x wrap is a good one very underrated very underrated another lucky crap jerk break you don't hear mention is spaz really underrated i have not i guess i don't even know what the spaz is four inch or three inch grub for small mouth four inch because you know what if they don't buy the four inch you can just cut an inch off and have a three inch grub Dude, I hope I'm fishing with Millican pretty soon. We're, he's got the baby on the way and whatnot, so we're trying to work together. He said, you come, he said, hey, come fish with me, but you got to fish in ice, and I'm not going to go ice fishing. I have thrown some of the old diving rattle traps. Not a fan. What's my favorite line for throwing water jigs, dragon ball? FC Sniper, 12 pounds. Six cents jank shirt. I don't know about that. I don't know if I can get Casey to uh, make a, a jank shirt, but uh, we'll see. I, I just need to design my own merch uh, a lot. Let's see. Think about trying to line through swim bait in a four inch size. Where to start as a baseline? Right here. This is what I would go buy. Go like this, too. This is a five inch. Yeah, guys, hit that smash that like button. Let's see if we can get uh, 350 likes on this thing. 
This is the Scottsboro Tackle 5 inch line through. It's been sitting in the box. Tail's a little bent, but don't worry. It's still going to swim dreamy. So anytime your tails bend up like this, all you got to do is, some guys say boiling water, all you really have to do is get hot water and sit it down in there for a minute, and it'll soften back up. But this is a line through that come with the owner treble. Uh, I don't know if a lot of low C, don't mean to flip you off, but there's a, all right, see there's the hole, the line goes in the top, comes out the bottom. Dude, these guys right here get hammered. That's a little custom bluegill color. See that purple flake in there? Oh yeah. And if you're going to the classic, I think uh, you owe it to yourself. If you're already down there, go to Scottsboro Tackle there. How do I organize my crankbaits? Well, I'll put them in Bass Mafia boxes. That's the best way. Look at here, I've already... I've gotten so much stuff. I've got a gap. Lipless. It's kind of my mid-range non-square bills. Jerking baits. I like to do some jerking. Small square bills. And then I've got... I don't have no room for these. Let's see. Have you ever thrown a 316 line through? I haven't thrown the line through, but I've heard they're really good. I have thrown the Rising Sun rigging it out normal, so... Are those line through internals weighted? Yes, uh, that small 5 inch is like 3 eighths of an ounce. And then the 6 inch which I've thrown quite a bit. I've had videos with this guy, and this one's already rigged up. I'll show you guys. This is the six inch line through. Uh, I believe this bait setup weighs closer to a little he a heavy half, so five eighths of an ounce. But the internal in there is only three eighths, and in the five inch, it's a quarter. But by the time you put a hook and rig it like that, uh, it weighs quite a bit. Plastic weighs down. So you can use nail weights to win them now. But that's kind of how that system goes. The fish bites, pulls the treble hook out. So the fish comes with a hook and your bait slides up. Basically, you're going to, one, hook up with more fish. Two, your bait's not going to get torn like on a regular swim bait head. Um, I had a video last year. You can probably look on there. I catch a couple janked sores on this thing. Let's see. I, I'm, I'll be honest, guys. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the freestyle. I can't get it to swim right. Now, the regular mag draft, I really like. So, What are the ideal signs to throw a swim bait versus another lure? Clearer water uh, around a lot of warming trends. Uh, if there's a lot of active shad forge, that's when I like a swim bait. Uh, personally, my go-to in the spring is always going to be some kind of crankbait or lipless. Uh, I'm going to use that swim bait when I'm around deeper water, uh, stuff like that. So, Reviews on a Rising Sun. Rising Sun's a great bait. I don't really know if I need to make a review on that. So, <laughs> Yeah, man. Kentucky Lake and worms go hand in hand. So let's see. Answer a few more questions. How many fish can you catch on them? Dude, I, uh, I think my fishing partner has the one that was in my video. Uh, I think I know for a fact I've probably caught about 25 bass on, on that Scottsboro line through. Now, not all those were really big ones. And I'll tell you the fish that tear up swim baits are 15 to 16 inch bass. When you catch a four to six pound bass on a swim bait, it doesn't tear it up because it can get the whole thing in its mouth. When you start catching them small ones, uh, all it does is... They jump and shake their head. And those are the guys that uh, tear up swim baits. They get to looking like a top of my head here. So, how tried the Beast Coast Miyagi? That's a good one. Uh, that travel is a size of uh, one aught, Ronald. And it's an owner ST41. Pick to win the classic. Uh, I'm going with Clint Davis. I think Clint Davis is going to hammer him. Clint's going to be that guy that's won the cup and the classic. Uh, I think it sets up good for him. Heck yeah, Chuck. 
It said, what soft plastic worm do I use in the spring? I, I'm, I'm a magnum trick worm or trick worm guy if I'll use a worm uh, in the spring or um, any kind of shaky worm like the divine shaky worm. I haven't used it in the spring because it hasn't been out for spring, but it's very similar to a trick worm. So I'm going to use more ribbon tail stuff in the summer and the spring. I'm really going to be drawn to more creature style baits uh, like a, a beaver and stuff like that. Dude, I'd love to come, Chuck. I'd love, but man, I've been off work so much and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to work for a while, but you never know where I might show up. I have some Shaker Seas, Big Red Bass, really good lipless. I will be at the Classic, uh, so I'm probably going to be at the Bullshad Swim Baits booth. Uh, I'm just going to have to schedule a time of day. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say right here, I'll be at the Bullshad Swim Bait booth uh, on Friday. Um from after weigh-in till it, it's over so actually the expo is different so um the expo is a different place than weigh-in but uh i'll be at the bullshed swim mates booth on friday just i'll let you guys on youtube know and facebook my schedule i gotta be on the water doing some filming stuff too so it may be a saturday deal for me to be at the expo Love the T-Mac. Love the T-Mac. So. All right. I've got to go check on my kids. Make sure they hadn't burned a house down. I don't smell nothing yet. but um, I like talking on here. Z-Man, Mag, Swim Z. I'll be honest. I think Z-Man swim baits suck ass. I'm just not a fan. I think they're really good for red fishing. And I think they're really good for finesse swim baiting and stuff. But as far as... You going to say... Uh, Cole, all you got to do is let me know. There's going to be a lot of custom paying ones there. I'll grab one for you send it to you. Uh, I'm just not a fan of the Z-Man swim baits for bass fishing. Uh, now, I'm not going to argue with Brian Latimer because he's a lot better fisher than me, and he's won way more money. He can make them work. For me, I'm not. Thank you, Billy Stepping. I, Stepping, I appreciate the donation to the stream, man. Nate, my punching game sucks, but I got to... Pretty good right cross. Got these short arms though. Got to I got to get inside. I I think if Zaldane wins the classic on a HUD, he would have to catch one fish that weighed twenty pounds a day, or two tens a day, because you're not going to get that many bites on a HUD. I just don't think a HUD's a tournament when a tournament bait uh, on the Tennessee River chain. I think more guys can catch more fish on moving baits and other swim baits than a HUD they catch. Now I think you catch them giants. Um, but hey, it may prove me wrong. Dude may catch 50 a day. What time of the year gets me fired up to fish? Man, I'll be honest. About the first week of March, I get fired up, man. Yeah, if Zaldane's throwing a swim bait, Mega Bass be making it, so. It's going to be interesting. There's, there's, I think a guy I can do like old Carl, uh, Jockum... Jack them, jack me off, son, and sit up there on the bridge with a football jig and catch them. I mean, if y'all remember that, old Carl was just stroking his little football jig there on the riprap and catching them. Thanks, Blockhead Tackle, man. I just like to have fun on the streams. Um, hopefully, Carl Jack Offson doesn't get too mad at me. It's, it's, Carl is actually a really cool dude. Uh, I met him. I do need some apparel. I need some ideas, man. I, I think I got to change my channel name. I'm taking the TV off. It's just going to be the bait man or something similar. And I just don't think anybody wants to wear apparel that says the bait man on it. So maybe I'll put something else on there. Like copy this Boyd with a middle finger. I don't know. I shouldn't do that. What I actually thought instead of since bait man is take the Hulk Hogan Hulkamania thing and put bait mania on it. And I figured guys would like that. You know, best ball head jig for swim baits, dude. Owner lockdown is really good in the Scottsboro uh, with the screw on it. You don't have to go crazy. Just get you some owner lockdown ball heads. That's the best thing. Bait man pro staff. Yeah, maybe I need to do a uh, contest. I don't know. Castaic swim baits, dude. Old school Castaic swim baits were freaking awesome, man. 
That is a good idea, Corey. Copy this void with the penis crankbait on it. Yeah. So. Well, we'll figure out something. Maybe that's something I can do this week. If they done told me at work, it's going to be really low. Where is Duckett recently purchased the rights to another brand's hard baits? Yeah, I heard that. Uh, gosh dang it. Who was it? What did they buy? Someone told me. Justin Sword, I heard net bait selling out too, bud. <clears throat> I heard the Googans are coming to buy buy the net baits. <clears throat> Got just kidding. The Googans aren't buying net bait. Matter of fact, net bait launched a new bait. Um, some guys on the Elite series had it, and it's like a kind of a beaver, but it's a. I'm gonna pull it up here on my internet. And show you guys what this thing looks like while we're on here. Gonna pull up a probably gonna go the wrong website. So if something else flies up on the screen that wasn't supposed to, y'all let me know. Look at here. We're gonna lock this thing down real quick. I don't want 15% off. I'm already a pro staff member to NetBait. Shop our products, creature baits. Let's look at this new bait here. Whoop. We gotta get the dagger. Check out the net bait dagger. I don't need 15% off. This is a really cool bait. It's probably popping up. It's just not showing on my browser. There we go. Look at the dagger here. I like that. I think this thing would punch. You can flip it. You can pitch it. I like that really slick profile. That right there. That looks good. We can take me off the webcam. There we go. That's even better. Let's see what colors we got here. The old Okeechobee Craw and the Dagger. I like it. Oh, uh, black, blue sapphire. Kind of a plum. $4.50 a bag. You can't beat that. Oh, yeah. The dagger from that bait. I like it. I'm back. I have to take care of my buddy Justice Ford there at Net Bait. He's a great, great dude. So, um, I do use the man bear pig. There's not much reaction innovations I don't use. What color do you keep multiple brands in? That's a really good question. Uh, multiple brands, chartreuse purple. I have a fetish for it. Uh, my reds, uh, root beer is a multiple brand and chrome blues. And then the rest is, you know, pretty much brand specific. Um, dude, I've tried to get some of that new stuff from missile baits. It ain't happening. Let's see. Have you heard the new bait that Bradley Hallman and Matt are designing for Big Bat Baits? I have not. Big Bat Baits make some cool stuff, though. I'll be honest. Uh, I think the net bait, uh, at one time, I think there was a lot of companies really afraid of net bait. Because, man, when they come out with the pack of craw and the baby pack of craw and the, the pack of chunks and juniors, it lit the soft plastic world on fire. And they have so many good colors. But, of course, fishing industry, everybody's got to try to make something like it. Uh, but I, now I think everyone's still back on the Zoom and Berkeley. And I'll be honest, I'm not impressed with a lot of Berkeley soft plastics. I think they're a reach. Um, but I do like, you know, I'm not bashing a company or anything when I say that. So Timeline for the Axis and Frog releases around the classic. Yeah, I'd say that's good. But Whew. Look at, look at this. I found some of these while cleaning out the old bait room. You like some dirty water cranking? There's a discontinued DT-16 from Rapala. That color right there catches them on old Lake Barkley in the summer. It would be hard to get these out of my hands. Camus boats are sweet. Uh, I'm going to go riding one here in about two weeks. Whatever happened last year, man, just could not get timed right.
anyway, uh, I'd love, I, I've been wanting to get a bunch of Berkeley soft plastics, but I really haven't just to look at them. Maybe I'm prejudging them. We shouldn't, we shouldn't prejudge baits. All bait lives matter. I'll be honest. Uh, I'm not so sure I wouldn't totally disagree with Jacob Wheeler because I've won more money on a Rapala DT-16 than any other crankbait I've got. Uh, freaking 2006, 2000 to 2008, man, it was just freaking unstoppable. And I love a 6XD. And I've, I've probably caught more fish on a 6XD and 10XD than any other crankbait. Um one, I've thrown them more. You know, that's no offense to Six Cents or anything. Uh, their stuff is really good, and obviously I've caught fish on them. But one more money on that DT-16. Bait lives matter. There we go. That's a good idea. Love the speed trap, man. Love the speed trap. Pit Boss, good bait. Uh, very underrated bait. That is an old school trick, Caleb. All right, guys, I got to jump off here, man. Um, a new podcast. I'm going to put it up tomorrow night. It's going to be with Jake Lawrence. Um, so, Bateman Raw go up Sunday nights for your Monday morning commute. And then I got a video of Bateman Jr. Uh, we're going to talk about all the baits he got at Academy, other than the Fritz side. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. Um, I've got to get all this stuff organized and everything. But thank you guys so much for joining in on this Saturday night. And. Uh, Make sure you smash the like button if you're new. Subscribe. And I'm probably going to change the title of this video because we didn't really talk about all my go-to spring baits. Uh, I don't want to be clickbait king like some people. So um, you guys have a good evening. Uh, enjoy the weekend with your family. And if you didn't wish your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, all lives matter here. Happy Valentine's Day. Go for it. Thank you guys so much. God bless y'all. Have a good evening.